Good morning, everyone. A little different schedule today with the match school, Catholic Schools Week. The bishop is having the children's mass in Ashland later on this morning. Our children will be watching it online. So tomorrow, this mass will just be an ordinary mass. It won't be the children's mass. And also, I'm going to use the mass for the sick. I think it's a good one to use during this pandemic situation, especially for those in our staffs that are involved right now. Mass is being offered for David Stoyevich. and pray for those who offer the Mass for him. So now let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we gather then in praise and adoration, we come to the Lord knowing our weaknesses, our faults and failings, and we ask pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that our infirmities be borne by your only begotten Son to show the value of human suffering, listen in kindness to our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Grant that all who are oppressed by pain, distress, or other afflictions may know that they are chosen among those proclaimed blessed and are united to Christ in his sufferings for the salvation of the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's listen now to the word of God. reading from the second book of Samuel. Absalom unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule, and as the mule passed under the branches of a large terebinth, his hair caught fast in the tree. He hung between heaven and earth while the mule he had been riding ran off. Someone saw this and reported to Joab that he had seen Absalom hanging from a terebinth and taking three spikes in hand, he thrust for the heart of Absalom still hanging from the tree alive. Now David was sitting between the two gates and a lookout went up to the roof of the gate above the city wall, where he looked about and saw a man running all alone. The lookout shouted to inform the king who said, if he is alone, he has good news to report. The king said, step aside and remain in attendance here. So he stepped aside and remained there. When the Cushite messenger came in, he said, Let my lord the king receive the good news that this day the Lord has taken your part, freeing you from the grasp of all who rebelled against you. But the king asked the Cushite, 
Is young Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rebel against you with evil intent be as that young man. The king was shaken and went up to the room over the city gate to weep. And as he wept, he said, My son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son. Joab was told that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom, and that day's victory was turned into mourning for the whole army when they heard that the king was grieving for his son. The word of the Lord. Psalm 86, listen, Lord, and answer me. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Keep my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Listen, Lord, and answer me. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Listen, Lord, and answer me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd had gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus, came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. And Jesus went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. And yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, 
turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the preacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And so he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. And then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Do not be afraid, just have faith. When you're in prayer, like the response psalm said, listen, Lord, and answer me, I can talk to a lot of people these days who are in prayer, but don't seem to get healed. And people all around are dying of this virus. Sometimes we forget that when you ask a question of somebody, especially of God, there are two answers possible. Yes and no. If like Jesus in the garden, we ask, as he did, to be spared of what was coming. He also told God, but not my will, yours be done. A true statement of faith that God knows more about the next step, what's necessary, than we do. And so in faith, we turn the situation over to God. And in the life of Jesus and in the dying and death of Jesus, we get a model of that answer. It's always yes in love from God, but not the way we look at it. Jesus, only some 30 years, died and he suffered. He died, but he rose again. For us in faith, that is always there, whether it's healing now or later. It's the later part that sometimes is hard. We ask the Lord then to open our minds and hearts, 
realizing that God is always at work in us, whether we're healthy or sick. We are called in faith to give ourselves to him in that way. Unfortunately, in this pandemic situation, we get stories that tell us we're not all connected in faith with God. Watch the news, listen to the descriptions of the death and dying, especially of famous people. It's like they're not in touch with that next step. Letting God work in them, be examples for us. It is hard. It can be frustrating when it seems we don't get an answer unless we're open to no as an answer. At least no, not now. Something else is coming. So we pray for those who are struggling at this time, especially in this pandemic. For those who seem not to get the answer they want, some who give in, we've heard a lot of suicide situations. We also heard We've heard about healings. Hard part is to see children suffering from this and parents, of course, watching their children suffer and die. So we have really have to have a, a strong faith. Our Alleluia verse, if we had read the whole thing, would have been Christ took away our infirmities and he bore our diseases. God unlimited becomes limited in our human nature, including illnesses and especially unjust suffering and death for us. That's the gift of love. Recognizing the humanness of our lives, he knows what it's like to be limited and, but he also shows us the gift that's coming, the gift of future life. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your life. We pray for our sick and struggling with their health, and we give thanks to the many medical people who are struggling also, some of them putting their lives on the line for us. May God bless us all with healing, and strength. So now we gather our prayers and intentions as we gather our gifts to bring them to the Lord at the altar for the church, for deep healing within the church of some of its problems and difficulties, we pray to the Lord. For our local officials here in the city, in the state and in the country, we pray to the Lord. For all those suffering, especially from the virus, we pray to the Lord. And in this Catholic Schools Week, we pray for our teachers and staff, and we pray for parents who are making the sacrifice to send their children to our Catholic schools. We pray to the Lord for the intention of this Mass, for David Stoyevich, and for those who offer it, we pray to the Lord. And for all of your intentions at home, the intentions in your heart. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. O oh, most loving and gracious God, accept these prayers through the hands of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh, God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons 
obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual food. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in your divinity, Lord Jesus, as you have shared in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, the Lord God. And so now, my friends, let us stand and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this prayer. Since the moment of our life unfold, O God, according to your good pleasure, receive the prayers and sacrificial offerings by which we implore your mercy for our brothers and sisters who are ill, that having been anxious for them in their danger, we may rejoice at their recovery of health through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O God, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so now at our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you now and always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, only support of our human weakness, show the power of your protection over your servants who are sick, that, sustained by your merciful help, they may be restored to your holy church in good health. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And continue to keep our Catholic school system in your prayers, especially those teachers who are willing to work for lower salaries than they could get in public schools. And for parents, grandparents who make the sacrifice to help send the kids here. My mother was grandparent to several children and she insisted that my brother and sister have their kids come to here at the cathedral system. And in order to help pay for it, she actually went out into the yard at night and got night crawlers on her hands and knees to sell them and make money. She did that until she came face to face with a skunk. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration here is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. Watch out for the cold weather that's coming in.